Hello everybody, I'm Donna from Magic Hour Needle Crafts, uh, formerly Magic Hour Cross Stitch Supplies. So if you watched our last video, you'll know that we have recently expanded into Needlepoint and as well as embroidery, tatting, uh, our whole lineup has been expanded. So we're really happy about that. I'm inexperienced at Needlepoint. In fact, I'm a rank amateur. I've never, I'm, I'm working on my first project now. So I'm ready to start my second project because I'm um, just about done my first one. And also I wanted to put on video um, the how to get started on a first project because I would like uh, other people to join me in the joy of Needlepoint. I'm really having a lot of fun with this, so I want to spread the joy. So here we go with my first Needlepoint project with all the, the goodies. I, this one is going to be in tapestry wool instead of pearl cottons. So what I've done so far uh, is I created a little pattern for myself. Uh, I've got some 10 mesh canvas. This is mono because it's an interlock. I've got my tapestry wool and a pack of needles. These are size 20 needles. We'll see how that works. I've got my stretcher bars and I need to cut my canvas. So I have a special pair of scissors that we use in the workshop for cutting canvas because it's really tough stuff to cut. I don't want to spoil my fabric scissors. And because after you cut it, it's left with jaggedy little edge, like a little saw <laughs> to protect my hands. I have gloves. So uh, I also have a box of tacks and we're going to try the uh, putting the canvas on the stretcher bars with the tacks. I've never done it before. Uh, I, and this will be my very first try even opening these uh, stretcher bars. Uh, so this is going to be quite an adventure. So the first thing we have to do is cut the canvas. So I'm going to just push this aside. My picture is eight by eight. So I want a couple of inches on each side. So I'm going to cut my canvas at 12 by 12. So here we have our little piece of canvas here. It gets pretty rolly, so if you can do anything to unroll, that's always a good thing. Make it a little easier for yourself. Also, make sure, if you're wearing a nice blouse, make sure it doesn't catch. Not a good idea to do this with a sweater on, because it'll definitely pull your and snag your sweater. Okay, that's a lot better. Nice and flat now. Okay, so 12 by 12, this is uh, about almost 20. So I'm just going to cut this at 12. Let's see if I need the gloves for this small piece. They're just ordinary gardening gloves. Uh, if I have to cut a lot of canvas, sometimes my thumb gets sore, you know, right here where you do the pressure because it's tough stuff to cut. So I have uh, actually a little one of those little stretchy winter gloves inside the right hand, I'm being right-handed, uh, to protect my thumb as well. Protection is important. Okay, that's one. And right here. Okay, my canvas is ready. Now the next thing I'm going to do is, now uh, this is, was my own idea, because I, I just started in Needlepoint. I have not yet uh, got a lot of uh, stash with patterns and stuff, so I've, I made my own pattern. And so now I have to, I don't want to be counting this one. I, this needs to be a fast, easy design. So I'm just going to line it up here on my, to center it on my canvas. And then I'm going to make sure it's straight like that there. So I could still see, I don't know if you can see it yourself, but I can still see my picture underneath because the holes are big, right? Even on the higher counts, you can still see the picture right through the canvas. So, uh, 
I know a lot of people do it this way. I don't know what it is they use to transfer the lines onto the canvas. I tried a pencil and it worked well because, and it was nice to be able to erase the lines. However, I did find that when stitching at or near where the pencil line was, the thread, which I was using pearl cotton on that one, uh, picked up some of the dark from the pencil. So I, uh, this time I'm going to try a Sharpie. So it's a really simple design, so I think the Sharpie will do a good job. And we're just going to trace out this pattern really quick. And, oh wow, this, I think we're going to need a bigger Sharpie. Uh, yeah, this isn't working. So I have a, okay, oh, that's a really big Sharpie. I have a bigger one right here. Yeah. Aha! It's nice to have everything handy, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going to uh, mark my corners. That would be a good start because I am going to do some background stitches. That's going to be the fun part. I get to pick my own stitches for background. Let's see how this works. Okay, so one important thing is mark on the threads, not on the holes. And with that, uh, you will have a lot easier time marking out the, the pattern. Now with this one, I showed you the, I faded it out so it, it, it might be hard to see on the video, but it's just some simple abstract leaves. So we want to be able to uh, trace, oh yeah, this is working much better. So we're going to trace out the picture. And it's not the details. I like I like the details, but they don't have to be exactly as the picture in this case, because I made the picture. I can adapt, and I'm going to have some long, skinny vine things, and some leaf things. So it will be like a combination anyway of different kinds of shapes, triangle shapes and roundish shapes and. So it'll be a challenge for the stitching as well. Okay, and now that was the, the structure of the leaves. So let's do some little bits in between here. We did the branches, so this is working really well. The bigger Sharpie is definitely the way to go. However, what I'll have to make sure I do is to stitch over the edge of the line. So the line itself will not show because it's stitched over. And um, if the, with the, that's why the pencil didn't work very well because I had to stitch over that as well. But on the pencil, the pencil, uh, the graphite from the pencil was picked up by the thread. So which the pearl cotton, but this one's gonna be tapestry wool. So I'm almost done here. Please be patient. But it's pretty easy and you can easily see the pattern. I printed it really light because I don't like to pay too much for ink. <laughs> I'm a cheapskate, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, I printed it really light because uh, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with it at that point. But uh, anyway, it's still easy to see. I would have uh, taken it to Staples to print, but Staples is still closed. We're in lockdown still. But at least on a video, I don't have to wear a mask like that. Just about done here. There. Well, you might not be able to see it like that, but I bet you can see it like that. Can you see it? It shows up. My webmaster says it looks fine. So that's Serena. She's always behind the camera. Okay, I have my picture. I'm quite pleased with it. It looks good. And hardly any came through. So this picture, if I wanted to do a set, for instance, I could uh, do more than one without having to reprint. Okay, now comes the fun part. I get to break open these. Stretcher bars are 
they're sold in one inch increments and you just find the one that's closest in size to your project and they come in pairs so you need four of course to make a square my project is square not rectangular so i have two the same size i have picked two pairs of 12 inch bars so i am going to i'm done with this stuff I'll move that out of the way now oh, you're good sweetie okay so i'm gonna oh, boy it's exciting new stash is always exciting don't you think I love the smell of fresh wood. Now these are unfinished and reusable. You use them again and again and again anytime you need uh, stretcher bars. So you can buy just what you need for the, your current project and then slowly build up your collection of stretcher bars that you can use anytime you need to. So you can see they have dovetailed joints. I don't know if you can see that. Put it against a dark background or something. Can you see that? Not bad. Okay. Well, anyway, it has a dovetail joint that fits together somehow like this. Okay. I get it. I also, on my uh, first project, I used my Q-Snap, and that worked really well. My project was 11 by 11. You want this a nice tight fit, so it's worth it to... Oh, I put it some effort into it. And it has to be a good right angle. There. No crack. You're Sorry about that. The is this phone. Right it's a business. Hi. All right. Yes, so, we are. Uh, I'll put this together. Oh, yeah, the Q snap. Perfect. So I used the Q snap. I'll see but, you there. Um, Bye. I found that it loosened off really a lot. I want it tight both directions. <laughs> Serena's gonna we have a customer here for picking up her order so we do curbside pickup only right now because of the, the pandemic of course so she's just gonna take her, our customer her order okay so these go together it's good that they are tight you want them to be tight Okay, this one's going in well. This one is being a little more reluctant. There we go. There we go. That slid in really well. Okay. No, that one's not in all the way. Let's put it on top of this piece that I'm not using. There we go. Oops, glasses. Okay. We now have a 12 inch square. That's how it's supposed to look. And it's solid too. It's solid in that it's not wobbly. It fits, it's a good snug tight fit and it will stay tight. So I found that with the cue snaps, the, the clamps would keep loosening off. It was a new cue snap. So I don't think it's the fault of the cue snap. I think it's just the nature of the canvas because it's quite a bit thicker than most cross stitch fabrics. So uh, we're ready to put this on my thing. So if you can see, maybe against my, let's see, it fits nicely inside the square. Now what we want to do is it's like it's almost like stretching a fabric after you finish your cross stitch project. So you want to stretch it onto this frame that we just built. So yeah, that's what the tacks are for. So we're going to do tacks. That's all good? Yeah. Okay, we've taken care of business, and now we can carry on with our project. I'm sure everybody can identify with that. Okay, so I've got my tacks open. These are just little gold tacks with a flat top, and they're, uh, they're sold in all kinds of crafts places. We do have them listed on our website. They come in a little box. I believe it's 100. I can't turn it over to look at the bottom or I'll spill all my tacks. But anyway, it comes with a little blue tool for taking tacks out. But that doesn't help you put them in. So this wood in the stretcher bars is actually quite soft and it's easy enough to push them, just push them in with your hand. So I'm going to try that. This is what I've been told. I'm going to try it out right now. 
So I'm going to start with right in the center of the top and just push it in with my thumb. It goes in a good ways. You don't want to push it in too tight or you won't be able to get it out. So, and then at the middle of the bottom. So we pull it a little bit so it's nice and tight. And this is going in quite well. Remember to put it against the right against the thread so when you let go it doesn't loosen off that much you want it to be very tight see that's pretty good right there now the sides i'm going to do the sides so you do top and bottom then the side centers and then work your way out from there until with stitch with uh, tacks about an inch and a half apart so we're going to be doing that so when Serena edits this video, she can just maybe speed through this part. I don't know if you can do that kind of thing, but she's a genius. So but what can I say? I'm the mom's. Everything she does is perfect. Anyway, so pulling it tight, putting in the tacks. It's, if you've ever stretched your fabric when you're finishing a, a cross stitch piece, it's pretty much the same thing. So you start at the centers and then work your way out to the corners. This is going really, really well. So, but you want to stretch it each time. I'm going to just do the corn, uh, the centers and the corners for the moment, and I'll finish up after because it's boring to watch people put tacks into a piece. But I'll just demonstrate this little duel. It, it's just like it looks like a a, a little crowbar thing, which is basically what it is there's a fork in the middle you just slide it underneath and pop it off so it comes uh, comes up very easily you can reuse the tacks reuse the tool of course and reuse the stretcher frame so this all makes it uh, the uh, a lot more affordable for your projects so again you want to make sure that you're uh, stretching it nice and tight it should be quite firm there okay I'll just put that aside for the moment and I'll finish putting in the tacks later. So right now, I did just the the centers and corners, but you will want to put them all, all the way around. So to keep your fabric or your canvas tight as you're stitching. But I was too eager to go, so I, I'm, uh, and to move on with the video, so I'm just gonna do those for now. So I did have an idea for, um, in case your thumb gets sore as you're pushing in all these tacks, of course you can use a hammer. I couldn't find my little hammer. So I thought, well, I would try with the just pushing and it worked. Another thought would was I have these little leather thimbles. You're gonna want these for your needle point. I found them very, very helpful because uh, it, it, with the thicker uh, threads that are typically used, it's harder to put, pull the thread through when you're finishing a, a length. So uh, the gripper leather thimbles for your gripping helped a lot. I also, it was it took a few days, but I built up some calluses here because it is harder to pull the needle through. So anyway, I was happy that worked. Now what I thought is take your leather thimble, put a coin inside and your thumb and then you can push them uh, a lot easier without damaging your thumb. So if my thumb gets tired as I'm putting in all these tacks, I'll give that a try and let you know how it goes. I'm ready to start stitching. So I have moved ahead uh, when you weren't looking. And I, I'm going to use tapestry wool, as I said. Here it is. This is DMC tapestry wool. It's 100% wool. It's a special type of wool specific for needlepoint and it's great for even for upholstery and rugs and everything and it feels so soft it's kind of feels spongy i just want to grip it and hug it it's like a stress ball thing <laughs> it feels really good so i have three shades of green and this is gonna this uh peach light peach is gonna be my my background color so i'm using I don't use this method with cross stitch thread with embroidery floss, but I'm going to do the pull skein thing because I don't, I'm, uh, don't think these are going to fit on my bobbins, which is what I usually use. So I've got a very short piece here. 
I'll just cut that off right there. And I have threaded up my, this is a size 20 needle. So it's quite a big needle. You probably can't see it, but anyway, it's a good size, that big and quite thick. So, but you do want a good size needle. So I'm going to use a waist knot to start. So I'm just going to do a little knot here. I'm going to start with the darker green because that's going to be for the vines in between. So I'm just going to start. And uh, what I decided to do with this is uh, to put the dark green uh, for the darkest green for the vines, the stems and stuff, the middle green for the leaves, the lighter green for the new leaves and the little baby leaves, and the background will be the the peach but I'm going to, going to use because they're the shapes are quite complex kind of some are pointy some are round I'm going to just use tent stitch for the actual figure but I could use some fancier stitches for uh, for the background so I'm looking forward to that so I'm just going to start right here with my tent stitch on uh, the, with the dark green and as you know I'm going to uh, tent stitch is easy. It goes faster than cross stitch because it's half as many strokes, right? Not as much stabbing involved. Which, I don't know if some people will think that's a good thing. Some people maybe not. But I do enjoy this, the actual stitching. And uh, the frame keeps it really nice and sturdy. So you can, um, you'll be able to... Uh, Manipulate it, flip it to tie off, you know, check for knots, and you know, it's really handy. I'm really enjoying using the stretcher bars. It's this is new for me, I've never used them before, as I mentioned, so it's new for me. And I've got my first few stitches in. See how quick that was? And it was also very affordable. So if you go on some, some uh, needle point things can be very pricey. The hand painted canvases are out of this world. They are gorgeous and if you can afford those, wow, good for you, go for it. Not everybody can afford to pay that much for a canvas. I can't. So that's why I'm doing it this way. There are other ways you can use uh, like a counted uh, pattern that looks similar to a cross stitch pattern but it's a needle point but it's a counted thing and there are other ways to do it. This is uh, the way I've decided to go because it's affordable and um, you don't have to pay a lot of money to get it into needlepoint. Uh, if, it, even if you're going from one craft to another, like need cross stitch or embroidery to needlepoint, you'll need some, you'll want to get some wool and you know stuff, but start small and just get what you need for your project. It doesn't have to cost a lot. And it's uh, nice to be able to try something new. The part that I'm really enjoying about the needlepoint is, uh, for one thing, the main bulk of the picture is tent stitch, so that goes really fast. And then what I'm having fun with is all the new stitches. So I'm learning how to make all kinds of new stitches, and there is a ton of information out there on the Internet. You can just look, up, look it up, and it, you'll see... Uh, every kind of stitch you can imagine but it's fun to learn those and I'm making a little book and of my stitch samples and uh, I've got some books now that I can look up what's a good stitch for a filler and that sort of thing and that is so much fun and I hope that you will uh, also try it out and see how much fun it can be to start out with needlepoint and if you have any questions you know where to find me I'm happy to be here and happy to answer any questions. And if I don't know the answer, I'll find out. It's Donna. I'm Donna. Serena's behind the camera still. <laughs> so come and join us. MagicHourNeedleCrafts.com. Hope to see you there. Bye. Hello again. A quick addendum for my video. Um, just what I'm doing is I'm just cutting off the extras and any uh, little points that are hanging off so it doesn't keep catching on my thread. But also I wanted to mention that um, 
I'm sure there are going to be experienced needle pointers who say, oh no, you can't do it that way. It has to be done this way. Um, or there are rules or there are conventions for uh, needle point, same as there are for any art, including cross stitch and other, other thread arts. And they're right, there are. And maybe I am doing it all wrong. As I said, I'm a newbie. But you gotta start where you're at. So where I'm at right now is I'm brand new to the art. I know I can do a nice picture this way, so I'm gonna start this way. And as I get more experience, I will learn the, the niceties and the, um, the uh, best ways to do things. Uh, that, that will bring, bring a better and better and better result. So you don't have to be perfect when you first start out. I'm not creating heritage pieces here. I'm just having fun stitching. And if that's your goal, then do it however you will do the job. So I'm doing it this way, and I will give you updates as I go along. So have fun with it. <laughs>